Hello there, and welcome to a Eurogamer uh, spoiler cast of Animal Crossing New Leaf. Uh, my name is Tom Phillips, and with me today is... Uh, Chris Donlan, sorry, I was... <laughs> Hello. There should, have been, there should have been a little drum roll there for you, maybe. <laughs> the drum roll was in my head. <laughs> I say spoiler cast. There aren't really that many spoilers for Animal Crossing. Yeah, are you going to give away the ending? Because, right. uh, the ending is Tom Nook finally repossesses your house. And it turns out he was Ganon all along. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about um, our experiences with Animal Crossing so far because this isn't uh, your first Animal Crossing game, is it, Chris? This is not my first Animal Crossing game. My first Animal Crossing game was uh, the Animal Crossing for the GameCube, which I originally there was a. I don't know if you remember this because you're obnoxiously young, but there was a big discussion over whether Animal Crossing on GameCube was ever going to come to the West. I remember oh, this going, very well. Ever going to come to Europe? Sorry, I, uh, I wasn't that young. No. So I went to New Age Consoles in Brighton, rest in peace, and I bought a copy, the American version, and a freeloader, which was the disc which allowed you to run American. Uh, and Japanese game, I think it allowed you to run Japanese games on your GameCube. And uh, Animal Crossing, my fr- my friend and I, we we uh, we split the cost in case it wasn't very good. And uh, gosh, that game was special. It's probably my, it is probably hand on heart my my favourite gaming memories ever are tied up with that. Wow, with that's Crossing. a pretty big claim. Wow. Just because I think partly because like now everyone ever since the DS version, uh, Wild World, Animal Crossing has been something which people they know what they're getting from it you know like kids play it on the train mm. and it's a game it really tied it really felt like it came alive with DS in the sense that they're kind of their thing of everyone plays games it was just a game that really fit into that but, but back on GameCube it really felt like a like a secret that no one really uh, no one else knew about it really was I think because the series was um, I, th- I still don't think it's incredibly well known but back then it was uh, a real rare odd gem that existed in Japan for years yeah that's right it was Animal was it Animal, Animal Forest, Forest yeah, yeah. And it, which I've seen screenshots of but um, it, we didn't know how it worked like we didn't know that it was real time we didn't know that, so we, we turned it on in the morning we played around a little bit and then we turned it on in the evening and it was evening in the game and that was such and it was I know I know games do amazing things these days to make you feel uh, astonished by what they can do. So, like, you know, in, in Halo, you'll get the massive ship zooming in overhead and dropping off troops or something like that. And you'll get all of these elaborate ways that games try and make you feel like you're at the centre of something special. But just running off the GameCube's internal clock was really... It was such an effective way of generating a feeling of wonder. It was... Uh, Incredible, and then from that point, all of the game systems started to come together just by exploring. You'd kind of dig. You had a shovel, so you try and dig a hole, and then you thought, "What happens if I plant a fruit?" And then you get a tree, and it's just oh, amazing. How about you? Uh, that was also my first Animal Crossing experience, um, and even earlier than that, I imported a US GameCube to play it on. <laughs> And then about a month later, they announced the freeloader, so uh, I wouldn't have needed to. What colour? This is GameCube. Sorry, we're off topic onto GameCube n- nerdery, but what colour was the American one? Uh, you could get them in purple or black. Uh, I had a purple PAL one, so I got a black American I've one. always wanted... Is it the, the spice, the pumpkin one? The, the orange. spice orange was I very had, cool. I had the spice orange controller, but I could never spring for a spice orange. Wow, at GameCube. we're getting wildly off Sorry, here. sorry. Um, so, yeah, that was my first experience. Um, it was actually the cause of a small house fire because the 40 step down converter that I got with it from uh, Goblin Games Importers and I do not wish them RIP right. um, although they are no longer with us yeah it kind of blew up while I was playing but all, 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 all worth it um, all fair all yes fair and obviously the, so the series has, has evolved a bit since then um, you mentioned the DS one which really kind of moved it along and I think it fits the portable game format a lot yeah. better don't you agree the, the, the DS one was the first time I saw I saw kids on a train I know I sound like a weirdo who watches kids on trains now but I was on a train and there was a kid with her family and she was talking about Tom Nook and, I, and it was one of those moments <laughs> where you think I thought I was the only person in the universe who knew about Tom Nook but uh, it turns out not and that was a really lovely moment and you know just the way the way these games are perfect they're a perfect introduction to the pleasures of video games for really young children because mm. they they present a view of real life which feels a little bit like the view of real life that children have like you know that money is important but you don't know where it comes from so maybe you can dig it up or hit rocks to find it <laughs> and uh it, it it's just 
Oh, yeah. The DS version was, was pretty... It's not my favourite version, but I think for a lot of people that was their first. And that's... It's pretty... I'm glad that it was a pretty special one, which had Brewster and the, the stuff you could do with the stars. During the, the constellations, and just going to visit Blathers in his... Uh, in his uh, with the telescope was a was a special moment. Definitely. Yes, I I would agree definitely. I put so many hours into that game, and then uh, it went on to the Wii uh, with Go to the City, which I'm ashamed to say I never played. I never played either, but I think I think we didn't miss out on much because it was quite like the DS version. Yeah, and also I've got to say, even we'll talk about this later, but the city is probably the aspect I like of. I like of this one the least. The main street is not my not my favourite thing. Yeah, I wish that it was all more sort of included in the main town. Yeah, uh, th- th- it feels like with the GameCube version, we're leaping ahead of ourselves here, but it feels with the GameCube version, the town itself was much bigger because you moved, you moved from grids, from kind of, it had a grid layout and you moved yeah. from one square to the other. And I do remember in the evening thinking, I'm going to go over and visit uh, the tip and see if anything has turned up or, you know, uh, the lost property. It felt like I was taking longer walks and then there's the, the lighthouse, which I wish they would bring back. Um, anyway, yes. So let's talk about the stuff which is new for New Leaf. Uh, and how do you like being mayor? Um, I think it is... I think they've basically exhausted the formula as it was. And, <laughs> and uh, it is a welcome change. Um... Because by becoming mayor, it allows you to stretch out the game. Uh, it has a much longer tail, I think, because you now have control not only over just your house and the repayments on that, because that is kind of your objective, at least in the early days. Mm. It's trying to scrape the money together from selling fruit and uh, collecting seashells to pay off that first loan to Tom Nook. Uh, so now um, a much longer process of seeing your town build up around you and making uh, a few choices uh, as to how the town operates and also which buildings you want to uh, construct in your town first. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that um, there's a, a lot more you can do in that regard and uh, the collection element to it is still as enticing as ever so I'm, I'm now just compelled to spend even more time <laughs> playing the game so I can pay off uh, a Rossetti centre so he can shout at me. Oh, it's amazing, it, Rossetti. He's a yes, the Tony Soprano, R.I.P. of uh, of Animal Crossing. Yeah, I I was worried about the mayor. I thought they were taking. I thought it was a step that would damage it. In that there is something nice about being um, just another citizen in town, but you are still. If fundamentally you are still just one of, you know, you are still doing the same thing. You just have a little more control over where it goes. It's not like I thought there was going to be a whole load of busy work attached to the office as in real life but it turns out it's mostly uh, ceremonial <laughs> <laughs> would you like to go to a ceremony yes um so there's other new stuff as well as being mayor isn't there there's um probably a greater level of uh online connectivity than there ever was before um and it's much easier to sort of invite your friends along it still takes some time actually when we do it in the office at lunch times yes when we're trying to get three or four people into the same game and then you have to watch them all leave again it's quite it's, it's a little disruptive it's pleasantly obtuse is the way i put it like i like the fact that they want to they're more interested in grounding it in the fiction of having a an, an a, a village where a monkey runs the train station and they are in making it accessible to people so it is all about this slightly odd language they use of would you like me to open the gate and the first time you do this you're like what are you talking about you know like what i just want tom to come and visit but yeah uh i like that about it because i think if this game was too connected it you would lose the 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 you know the kind of bottled universe feeling of it mm. i don't want to share it i don't want to share my village too much with other people because I love the fact that it's like a little world in a matchbox that I can that I can kind of check out whenever I want. I, I still find it metaphors. weird when I go to your town and there's an identical version of Isabel in your town. Yeah, office. it's that is weird. That is completely weird. They've yet to find a reason in the fiction for that. There, I know, and like, I mean, like, funnily enough, like, I think a lot of uh, this is the major problem with like MMOs have this. This is just a connectivity problem. There's this. Everyone has this experience in War, World of Warcraft where you go on a quest and they say, "Oh, thank God you're here. Only you can save the day and kill this dragon." And you go, "Okay, I'll go do it." And then as you leave, someone else comes in and you hear them going, "Oh my God, thank God you're here. Only you can save it." And you, uh, yeah, but I think. Uh, Animal Crossing because it is really limited to the people you want to hang out with and and that sort of thing. I think it just about gets away with it. And some of the new stuff is lovely. Some like going to going to the island with people. 
yeah, going on the tours, that's a real interesting uh, multiplayer experience as well. Um, yeah. Rich Stanton was saying that when you go on, you go with a friend to the island and you sit in the boat together and Captain sings a song about friendship, which Aww. is really a, just a lovely, a lovely touch, a really lovely touch, yeah. Maybe like Pokemon, all of the towns have their own versions of Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny. <laughs> Um, so it, there is more than that, though. There is more than connectivity, which is which is definitely great. Um, but there are um, there are lots of new characters. So, for example, um, what's the sloth called? I always forget his name. Leaf. Oh, Leaf. Leaf. He is a, a neat a neat character. Yes. Have you spoken um, to him much? Um, I have heard that he becomes a bit less weird and a bit more chatty if you talk to him quite often. But at the moment, I'm kind of freaked out by him. I, He's got this kind of look in his eyes. He is an odd design, but I think he is a very sweet man. And he loves... Uh, this is another thing I love about Animal Crossing. It just it, it, it is an incubator for good social policy on things. In that Leaf really wants you to think about the environment, which is ironic because it's Nintendo who make everything with you know poisonous batteries and stuff like that. But... He does want you to think about the environment, and there is this lovely little. Uh, there's a lovely. I love those sort of social interaction elements. Yeah, and it, you know, it's encouraging you to go to the museum and to donate, and not just because the, I think the way Bladders is created, he's supposed to be a character you feel sympathetic for, so you don't just sell everything for money. Yes, I do, but equally, sometimes Blathers is a double-edged sword. Sometimes I know we're talking about a cartoon owl here, as if he's a, uh, as if as if he's a real person, but sometimes I do feel he's a little bit manipulative. So he'll say. Oh, I'd really, oh, I'd really love this. If only uh, I had the money. Oh, if only I had. The, yeah, I wish, I wish I could have this thing that you found, which is amazing. But I'm going to give it back to you for now. And you, you do think, Blathers, screw you, buddy. I'm going to go and sell this because I want to, I want to build a coffee shop for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> the so, challenges of being mayor. Yeah, another big option I like is the um, the ability to snapshot uh, pictures. Yes, um, and that I think makes a huge difference. I, I've just been seeing my. Twitter feed full of uh, people sharing what they're doing. It keeps that kind of bottled universe, but at the same time allows you to really show off what you've got. It keeps it within the fiction in yeah. a weird way, even though you are somehow, you have a, it makes sense you'd have a camera, even though this camera can magically take p- photos from above you at any point. But um, yeah, it really does. It's the sense that you're going on a little holiday and here you are showing your, your, it's amazing when a friend comes to visit. I took a picture of Rich Stanton and when he visited my town and it's in our review and it's just lovely. I'll be able to look back and think, oh yeah, that is Rich wearing his 3D glasses. And uh, um, yeah, th- there's something about that which is very special. Have, I haven't been following this since release, but has Nintendo released the social networking app for it yet uh no because i gather in the japanese version there are there are all kinds of things which they've released which allow you to export to social networks easier which we, and I, I i gather they're coming here at some point but that might that might change um and that would be lovely yeah it would um also tying into that is the dream suite which allows you to walk around other people's towns and experience them too. the dream suite is weird isn't it is it a bit it's a bit of david lynch in the middle of your yeah. animal crossing i like that description a weird sort of black and white fever dream of someone yeah. else's town you kind of expect rossetti to come up and start talking backwards as uh, as blood pours out of his eyes um <laughs> wow uh so on that note uh, <laughs> there are lots of things obviously that are new in the town but um I think I think the the core values of the game and the reason why you know it, it's, it's going to go down as one of the series greats is the um, the feeling of it the atmosphere very much remains the same. Um, something you wrote in your review actually really stuck with me, which is um, your description of the series kind of being about an outsider, the lone human trying to fit into this weird anthropomorphic animal world. Yeah, there is. It, I think every. When everyone who plays the game says that there is this feeling of melancholy to it, which is really hard to put your finger on it, and it's something to do with walking through the trees, and it's something to do with just the, the amazing music. I mean, the music for this game is probably, oh gosh, the, the, some of the best music in any game ever. I genuinely believe that. I, I find that people in the office are humming it now. Yeah. It should place Jurassic Park as the thing that we all hum together and, um, sometimes. The, uh, the first, the GameCube game, I wish they did this again, the GameCube game, when the Nintendo logo came up, there, there was this, this distant train whistle, and it just really keyed you into that sort of sense of yeah. slight melancholy. But I do think, I was trying to put my finger on it, and I'm not sure I'm right, but part of it is to do with the fact that you are a little bit separate from them, aren't you? You can, mm. you can get involved in their lives, but you can't really initiate anything. The most you can initiate is you can start them telling you something that's on their mind but you know you're you're kind of 
you, you are separated from them, and you are a human, and they are like rats and and uh, and you know uh, lions and stuff like that. There is that sense of distance, which luckily the being the mayor doesn't change that much. No, no, maybe even accentuates it a little bit. Um, but I, it's still a very fun game to play. Like uh, we were talking the other day about how we played around with our town tunes. Yes, mine is uh, "Ballad of the Windfish" from *Link's Awakening*. Who do I know who set theirs to EastEnders? Like a really downbeat version of the EastEnders music. I don't know. Tom Champion has his as Jurassic Park, <laughs> but he hasn't done it very well, so it doesn't sound anything like. Oh really? Does it sound like the Jurassic Park played on the what's that instrument? On the melodica. The melodica. Yes, YouTube, that it's very funny. Um, yeah, I mean, I tend to with the the town tune. I get so um, it's like Little Big Planet. I get so terrified by the potential for what there is, where I just randomly slide the the stylus up and down, and I make a, I try and make a tune of like the the worst, most discordant tune I can get. But somehow it always manages to sound kind of all right. Mm. Um, and like the the flag. Have you have you changed your flag yet? I have. Yeah, it's now a Eurogamer Expo T-shirt. Such a fan. <laughs> That's very good. My friend Tamor, uh, who uh, writes for another website, uh, has uh, <laughs> has made his flag this terrifying kind of death metal skull, which is which is very effective, very effective. Wow. Um, so, so can I ask? One of the things I'm really fascinated by is which animals different people have in their village, uh, because part of the appeal is this like, the sort of roll of the dice of who you're going to get turning up. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why people enjoy talking about the game so much is because everyone has a different experience each time they turn it on. So for me, it'll be chatting up with, uh, catching up with um, Pate, my uh, friendly. What is he? Some of them I don't actually. Some of them are quite hard to tell. I know they're all real animals, aren't they? They're all real animals. Like a beaver in a luchador mask. Oh, wow. Uh, and then I've just had this angry rhino move in who I think Martin Robinson evicted from his town and because I street passed him he's turned up in mine and he's now calling me weird names the rhinos tend to be a bit emo in Animal Crossing um, the one the, 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 it's not Spike is it? you don't have Spike? no Spike I had Spike in my very first village and uh, I loved he was very grumpy and he's a bit he's a bit of a, a metalhead but when he said he was leaving, I was like, if you leave, I don't want to play this anymore because I love you, Spike. Uh, have you got anyone that you really, really love? Um, no, I, I had a few people I didn't like. And when they said, oh, we're leaving, I was a bit like, OK, see you then. <laughs> did they leave then? They did. Someone told me, I don't know if it was you, that they said, OK, see you then. And then they were like, well, in that case, I'm going to stay. Certain, I think it's these these hidden... Underneath each animal is like a, it has a combination of two different characteristics, hasn't mm. it? And I think one of them ha- is slightly bullshy. So if you get that one in, and they say, "Well, I'm off," and you go, "Okay, don't let that door hit you on the way out," then they they go, "Well, okay, well maybe I'm going to stay then." Um, I have uh, I had Claudia, who I did not like at all, and who uh, delighted in telling me that we could never be best friends. And I was wow. like, "Well, well, Claudia." Screw you, Claudia. Screw you, Claudia. But I've got Leonardo, who I adore, who is a very uh, health-conscious leopard, um, oh. who is always inviting me around and just uh, basically appraising areas in his house which he thinks would be good for working out in, and uh, which is fine. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. And uh, uh, Quils- Quilson, a duck with a bowl cut, is I, I, I particularly love ducks in real life. Ducks and frogs in real life. I'm I'm away. And uh, I haven't got any frogs yet, which is a shame because Animal Crossing frogs are the best. But uh, yeah, I've got a lovely, a lovely duck called Quilson who I like very much. Frogs and cats, I think I'm trying to aim for. Maybe over the sort of, if you keep playing for 10 years and you slowly cherry pick ones to evict, then you'll eventually get the dream lineup. I wonder whether you can play it like that. I mean, I'm tempted to play at some point when I've given up on life. I'm tempted to try and evict everyone. I know this is John Bedford, uh, our colleague who writes for Mojo- Madojo. <laughs> Uh, he is. He wants okay. to evict everyone, <laughs> and just have the village to himself. Which again is a perfect example of how Animal Crossing is a mirror. It holds a mirror up to your own impulses. Yes. Um, I haven't seen any of. The, there are new animals in this one, aren't there? Is it? Is it? I want to say deer is new. Yeah, I got a. I got a blue um, donkey with like a, a polka dot um, neckerchief or something. He's definitely new. Some of them. The the character design makes them seem unusually large. Birds 
seem unusually I had large. a very large parrot. Yeah. And they are quite frightening, actually. Uh, so young children uh, might want to watch out for that, because some of those animals, you see them wandering around a corner with an axe, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> this has taken a turn for the worst. I heard that one of the reasons, or the reason, that Rossetti is optional in this one is because early focus groups in Japan got scared by him. This is a thing about the, 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 a, a minor. Uh, let's take a minor tangent here to talk about the dangers of focus grouping stuff. So, um, <laughs> so it, like Rockstar, one of the one of the few things I really agree with Rockstar about. Let's add a little controversy to this: is that they they uh, they play test all their games allegedly, though some of them have terrible control issues. But they never focus test their games because they say, like, uh, play testing is about finding out whether what we've built is broken. Whereas focus testing, you just get a bunch of people saying you shouldn't have built this in the first place. And certainly in movies, it's true that when they focus test movies, they always become worse as a result. Mm. Because there'll be a scene in it which is meant to make you feel uncomfortable. So, like, take... Take a scene in Citizen Kane. Why not, A? It's video games, so we're always talking about Citizen Kane. Take the scene in Citizen Kane where the elderly Kane smashes up his his, uh, wife's bedroom. Spoilers. Sorry, yes. Worst spoiler, it's a sledge. Um, Wow. (laughs) But that scene makes you feel really uncomfortable. It's this elderly guy losing it in his wife's bedroom. And... If you focus group that, you would get responses from people saying, oh, this scene makes me feel really uncomfortable. And the the suits, as they are called, uh, would want to remove it. They'd say, well, we can't have people being uncomfortable during our film, so let's take this scene out. That scene is designed to make you feel uncomfortable, and if you take it out because it's successful, you're kind of being stupid. And I think the Rossetti is the same thing. Rossetti is designed to make you feel the impact of what you're doing when you forget to save. When you're basically breaking the game for yourself, Rossetti is there to be a jerk to you and remind you. And he is he is angry at you and a bit mean, but that's because that's what his character is, and it really works. So to take him out, it feels like a... I don't know, the game feels slightly diminished because of it, don't you think? Or maybe I just like... He, he reminds me of the one-handed man from Arrested Development who keeps popping up to teach the Blues children. Oh, yes, J. Walter Weatherman. And... That's why you always leave a note. That is why you always leave a note. (laughs) Exactly. Because he's there for for an educational reason. That's why you don't try and teach your son a lesson. Um, (laughs) Yes. In fact, he would... That actor would probably play him in the movie mm. because he's perfect. He's also he's also a little bit of Sal from um from uh Futurama, the guy who's uh who always puts who always pluralizes everything and talks about how lazy he is all the time. He's got a bit of Rossetti to him. Uh but yes, I, I wish there was more of him. You get him once, is that right? You get him once and then after that he never turns up again or unless you build his Rossetti Center. Does yes. he just abuse you if you build his Rossetti Center? I think you can go down there and hang out with him. Oh man, I just like maybe this is. You and just with, want him to. Like, you probably, you know, yeah. And with him in his ta- in your town, he can also pop up and go to the to Brewsters. And... The moment when he used to in with the moment when he you'd leave your house and you'd think, oh, I got away with I it, know, and then he'd that dig second. his way out of the you ground. You have that second of oh, I, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, no. Wasn't not. there a bug in the original game that if you saw him enough, he took away, he accidentally took away your character's eyes? <laughs> what? That is truly frightening. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Sorry, children. Um, so, kind of going back to where we were <laughs> before <laughs> all of that. Um, to conclude, I think that one of the one of the I think we can agree that one of the big reasons why we're all talking about Animal Crossing in the office at the moment quite um, incessantly is that it's very unpredictable and um, the differences for each player. Um, just make the whole experience something that we can share, whether it's in picture form or mostly via. I got a pear today. Yes, I've got some perfect oh cherries. Let's there go. is lots of fruit discussion and stuff like that. Particularly with some of the people we play with, play the game in a way that no one should play the game. I uh, do fruit farm. Yeah, you fruit scale. farm. But Dan Pearson, who works for GamesIndustry.biz, he wouldn't mind me saying this. He is min maxing Animal Crossing, and I went to his village and it is like one of those uh kind of mined out bits in midwest where they've 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 taken all the coal out and the landscape is just irradiated and destroyed (laughs) he's gone too far but the other thing is isn't it that it moves at the pace of your own life Mm. so like every day there is something to do and also there's something amazing about having a game which you feel that it has a life outside of you in a weird way. Yeah. When you're not there, you can almost believe that Leonardo is wandering around and doing stuff and Claudio is talking about you behind your back. I like the fact that the game 
feels it gives an impression that it it doesn't need you. And yes, maybe I maybe. And I, th- I think that's why a lot of people really invest themselves in it. I mean, you could look at the game very uh, shallowly and 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 see you know a lot of, maybe some of its rougher edges or mm. maybe some bits which don't really work. But then you kind of put your, some of yourself into the game and you find yourself kind of bending and trying to fit into its world yourself yeah and, and that's a really good point as well the sort of the people talk about they say oh the mechanics of animal crossing are inherently uninteresting some people say it's all about earning money which you do by farming things shaking trees shaking trees and by like catching bugs and by really min maxing and then you are just buying stuff and that is quite boring but this Animal Crossing in particular feels that it is using game mechanics not as game mechanics. It's using them as a way of pacing out the game. So like normally, like farming in a uh, in an MMO or something like that, they, you know, it's it, the, the game is broken down in some cases. Like the, the grind has kind of overtaken because the systems are overpowering everything else. Whereas I think this one, you're almost meant to forget about the systems. You're, you're, meant, you're meant to forget about the criteria which unlocks things and just experience as it, as it trickles out at you. It's a uh, fascinating stuff. I mean, uh, what an interesting game this is. Yeah, and I think everyone plays it in a different way. Yes, definitely. Um, so, for example, uh, what would you say? What would you say are the hallmarks of your of your playing style? Um, I do a circuit of the town and look for fossils, and then if it's a uh, fruit germination day, which is every third day, <laughs> I, I, I spend time picking fruit. Otherwise, I I used to go and talk to Mabel, the shy one of the raccoon oh, yes. sisters, every day uh, to try and cheer her up. And as soon as I get Brewster, I'll be hanging out with him. Brewster is my absolute favourite. I love what a dandy he is. He's kind of like a French. He looks like he's he's stumbled in from like a Monet painting, doesn't he, or something? He's got like the moustache and the kind of oh, Brewster's is wonderful. Uh, I once described him as being a an owl. And I got an angry email from someone who said he's a pigeon, you idiot. And of course he is. Yeah. But still, uh, thanks, whoever that was. <laughs> I can't wait till I am able to voluntarily work my minimum wage job in his shop. I, I really, really can't. There's something about... So games spend so much time working out... Game designers, especially in the current uh, age, the current climate, they spend so much time working out what... What can we make people want to buy from us? A lot of um, game designers, free-to-play game designers, will talk about your first dollar. How do you get your first dollar from the player? Mm. And so, like one of the like one of the games it's will be really like when you, oh, it like is, that. yeah. So uh, EA famously said, "You're playing Battlefield and you run out of bullets. How much would you pay right then for an instant reload?" Mm. Which is evil. Um, and a lot of games sell you continues and stuff like this. Brewster charges you for coffee that doesn't exist and gives you no benefits other than the animation of watching your character drink a coffee. I would pay money for that. I would. I hope Nintendo never listens to this. I would probably pay now and then 69p to drink an imaginary coffee. But I used to go in there and do it every day and there used to be no benefit whatsoever but I still used to do it because I liked hanging out with him and just... Also the music in the old Brewster Cafe was so sad. Uh, and uh, you can teach yourself to play it quite easily on the piano if you're about grade one or two. It's very, very easy, but it's so sad, so emotional. Uh, lovely stuff. Anyway, um, so yes, it's it's. Uh, do you think this is the best Animal Crossing yet? This is such a hard thing to, uh, to ask, but yes. it seems like it's... I think it might be, even though it doesn't have the virtual console games of the GameCube era, because Nintendo worked out it could charge you <laughs> £6 uh, to download them, all, download them all separately. Um, for me, after Wild World, that was the name of the DS1, wasn't it? D- DS1 was Wild World, yeah. Um, yeah, after that one, it, the series really clicked as a, a handheld franchise for me, mm. and it's something that deserves to be carried around with you, played on the go, and the new features in this kind of really play up to that, the fact that you can share it, and the fact that we can all play it together in the office. We wouldn't be able to do that if it was console games. No, absolutely. It certainly has wormed its way into our lives more deeply than ever, yes. Yeah. Right, well, I think I'm Animal crossing out. Okay. Um, so, Animal Crossing New Leaf, it's out right now uh, on 3DS. Uh, and we're all talking about it so come talk to us on Twitter about it too thanks very much